So should you meditate? Is it actually going to help with your social anxiety? Or maybe you've been trying it off and on and it, it doesn't seem to be doing anything, right? So in this video, I wanna help you understand why that is. Should you meditate? Why would you even dedicate your time and your energy to such a tedious, boring practice in the first place, okay? I wanna help you understand the deeper purpose of meditation and should you incorporate it in your life or not? Let's explore this now. So if you're a part of our community, welcome back. If you're new here, welcome this community. It's dedicated to reducing your social anxiety, owning your deep value and expressing that fearlessly into the world. My name is Ruben, I'm a transformational coach. I'm the creator of this community. If that resonates with you, I wanna offer you a free masterclass. Within that masterclass, the link is below the video for that. I encourage you, I want you to take that masterclass so I can walk you through the process for reducing that social anxiety, tapping into that deep belief in yourself so that you can express yourself fearlessly in the world. So again, link for that is below the video. Empower yourself with that training. Okay, let's get into this meditation here. Should you meditate? Why should you meditate? What's the point of it, okay? To help you understand first, there's so many types of meditation, okay? You can get lost in the weeds for all the different types of meditation. Just a heads up, a few types of meditation here to give you an idea. You can pay attention to your breath. You can pay attention to your thoughts. You can pay attention to the sensations within you. You can do visualizing. You can do mantras, chanting mantras, okay? You can pray. Praying would be a type of meditation as well. We're gonna keep it super basic, very, very basic. The type of meditation, just to give you a very basic understanding of this, sitting quietly, eyes closed, trying to notice your thoughts and not get drawn into them. And when your mind starts to wander into thoughts, bringing yourself back to the present moment. So your thoughts are like clouds in the sky and you're letting these clouds just float on by so that you can stay present. In other words, you can quiet down your mind. You can stop the chatter going on in your mind. That is essentially the core practice of meditation is trying to stay present, bringing yourself back to the present moment. Now, if you've been trying to stick to meditation for a while, don't be too hard on yourself, okay? Most people find sticking to a meditation practice extremely, extremely difficult. They have a very, very hard time trying to build up that habit and build up that consistency. Okay, so what my intention is for this video is I want to really inspire you to, let's open this up, okay? Let's open this up. I don't want you to only think about thoughts and bringing yourself back to the present moment, okay? What I want you to do, what I encourage you to do, what I wanna inspire you to do is to get familiar, okay? Discover, embrace, get familiar, build a relationship with your internal landscape. Okay, what do I mean by that? The thoughts, your feelings, your beliefs, everything that's going on inside your mind, I want you to start exploring that, okay? Now, these clouds in the sky, for example, clouds in the sky are like your thoughts. The clouds come and hopefully you can let them go, come back to the present moment, okay? But why, what's the purpose here? What, what's the point of even doing this whole meditation practice in the first place. The purpose is, okay, the purpose is to get in touch with what's between those clouds, what's between those thoughts, what's embodying the space in between, okay? Clouds in the sky, but who's the sky? Who's the container that holds all of these thoughts, that allows these thoughts to even exist. It's your higher self, okay? The whole purpose of doing some sort of meditation practice or exploring that internal landscape is to get introduced to your true self, your higher self, okay? If that's not your ultimate goal, it's not worth it for you. There's no point in actually doing it, okay? Don't meditate just to meditate, just to say you did, just to quiet down your mind a little bit, okay? More so, 
is building that relationship and coming to knowing who you truly are in between those different thoughts and feelings that bombard you, those negative thoughts and feelings that bombard you throughout the day. Now here's where I see most people get this wrong is the application of meditation and trying to bring over these tools that you're learning over here into social interactions and conversations. Now why, why is it so hard to bring this meditation practice or this present state, this, this mindful state that you're in into a social interaction is because when most people meditate, okay, they enter and what I call an ego state where they're passively observing their thoughts. Okay. Think about what I just said there and you might've experienced this yourself. You're passively observing your thoughts. Okay. Now I want you to think when you go into a conversation, do you want to be a passive observer? Okay. Isn't that why your personality is so boring in the first place? Okay, do you really want to bring in this meditative energy, this passive observer into a conversation and try to interact with people from that place? No, you don't. Okay, now what I want you to understand, this is very important. Remember, I said the only reason you would get into a meditation practice is to meet your higher self. Okay, and to get familiar with it so you can embody that more and more. Your higher self is not this observing state. Your higher self is a very powerful force. It's confident, it's assertive, it's charismatic, it's fun. Okay, this is your higher state, this flow state. Okay, this is what you want powering up your conversations and your interactions with other people. Okay, so this is a huge, huge misconception. I want you to really understand this on a deep level, okay? Those different feelings that come up when you're in a conversation, extreme self-consciousness, terrified you're gonna make a mistake, all the shame, fear of embarrassing yourself, okay? Feeling super weird, awkward, okay? These different feelings, you know, worried about being humiliated, worried, sensing danger, all of these, this is this thing that you're experiencing within a conversation, okay? Those are childlike feelings. The emotional maturity of those thoughts and feelings, okay? The emotional maturity is five years old, 10 years old, depending on when you experienced those embarrassing situations, right? Maybe mom, dad used to shame and criticize you. You went through the bullying in childhood or teenage years. That is the emotional maturity of those feelings and those thoughts that are coming up, okay? So to help you understand this, let's look at the situation from the outside, okay? Childlike feelings coming up. If you saw a child on the side of the road, okay? You see this child on the side of the road terrified, absolutely terrified, going into shock, in complete distress, okay? Who knows what happened to the child, okay? In complete distress, panic, fear, overwhelm, okay? Would you passively observe this kid? Would you go up to the, would you go up to this, this precious child and would you just look at them? and observe them, uh, no, you, you would not be a passive observer. That's yet another state within you, but it's not your higher self, okay? Remember, your higher self, it's powerful, it's purposeful. It's, it's got so much compassion and care for people. Your higher self would tell that ego state, that observer, get the hell out of the way, okay? Get the hell out of the way. I wanna go and see what's going on with this kid. I want to help and care for this kid that's in distress, which is why you're not feeling more comfortable and relaxed in the social situation because of the meditation. Okay. The observer, is he really helping the situation? It's not helping one bit. And he's probably making it worse because the child sees now sees somebody observing him and he's like, dude, why are you not helping me? This is putting more pressure on me because now I got eyes on me. 
and I'm in such a vulnerable position here, I need help. And now I got this passive observer looking at me and he's not doing anything, okay? So in the social situation, and, and I hope you're, you're picking up what, what I'm putting down here is, this situation's happening inside you in the social interaction. The little kid in distress is actually inside you coming up and welling up in that social interaction. And you're trying to go into an ego state to observe it and it's making the situation worse. And the passive observer, think about it like this, a passive observer, okay? The, the one with no feelings, no compassion, no care, indifferent, lame, boring, okay? That is the passive observer. Is that really where you want to interact with people from? From that place, from that indifferent energy? Absolutely not. Okay, and if you've been trying the meditation, it's just stop moving the needle and this is, this is really making sense to you now, make sure you take that masterclass, okay? It's gonna really shift things and open things up for you, okay? So let's get back to this, this meditation here, and I hope you really understand now the purpose, why you would even go down that road. Why would you dedicate your time and energy to this meditation practice that most people never stick to, okay? It's to meet your higher self, okay? Not the passive observer, okay? Very, very, very important. Most people when they're meditating and they think they're in touch with themselves, they're in touch with the observer, the passive observer. Nobody likes that passive observer, right? So let's go back over here. These different thoughts that you're having. Let's answer this question. Should you meditate? Okay. Should you incorporate this practice? And I want to help you understand your internal landscape even more. Okay. So if you think of a funnel, okay, at the top is your thoughts, underneath is your feelings, and underneath that is your emotions, okay? I go into this in another video, I'm gonna link it at the end so you can check that out, it's gonna be really helpful for you. Now, ultimately, really quick here, just to summarize, you could have thousands of thoughts, thousands of thoughts for just a handful of feelings, for just one or two emotions that are going on in your body. Emotions happen somatically within your body, your feelings and your thoughts happen within your mind, okay? This is your internal landscape. The emotions are the, the fire to the smoke that's happening up here in your mind, your thoughts, okay? Now, if you're not doing anything at all to even get familiar and turn and face this internal landscape and at least start exploring it, start with some meditation, do something at least, okay? Is it gonna reduce your social anxiety? Is it going to stop you from getting triggered in the moment? Is it gonna make you a better conversationalist? Is it gonna make you more confident right in the moment? No, probably not, okay? But at least you're turning and facing in the right direction, right? At least you're turning and facing and at least you're going in through that most superficial layer and it's the gateway, it's gonna open you up to the deeper layers that you really wanna work and process through and heal so that you can overcome your social anxiety. So if you're not doing anything to explore your internal landscape, it's like you're at the game and you're facing the stands, okay? You're facing the crowd, okay? If you can start turning and facing, maybe you start with the meditation and you start facing this internal landscape, at least you're looking at the game now, okay? And if you start with meditation and you start exploring inside and you start working your way down to ultimately meet your, your higher self, okay? That's like getting in tune with the star player of the game. And your star player has all of those qualities that you're looking for outside yourself. He already has them inside here. The confidence, the assertiveness, the boldness, the expressiveness, the courage, everything that you're looking for is inside but you have to get in touch with it and not let that passive observer run the show and give you that indifferent, boring personality, okay? Get that passive observer away from the kid, 
Okay, get them out of the way. We got stuff to do. We got shit to do. We got a life to live. We got we got to win this game of life. Okay. So again, take that master class. The links below the video. Take that class. I'm going to walk you through reducing that social anxiety, tapping into that inherent worth, getting that observer out of the way, tapping into that inherent worth, your higher self and expressing yourself fearlessly. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe. Here's that other video I was talking about that goes further into that thoughts, feelings, and emotions funnel. It's gonna really help you understand your internal landscape even more. And thank you for staying with me until the end. I will talk to you soon. All right, peace out.